Black and Hi there, and welcome to a new Plugin Guru Quickie video. My name is John Skippy, I'm cool, and I am happy to show you Contact 5 today. Contact 5 is, without a doubt, the most powerful sample playback synthesizer on the planet. It can do some things that will make any other sample playback system just seem like kindergarten in comparison. So if you're familiar with ESX24, other basic sample playback systems, this would be a bit of a shock how powerful this is. Uh, I recommend, after watching this video, don't go buy Contact 5 today. But I would do, if I were you, this is just my suggestion. If you buy Mega Macho Drums, or if you buy one of the other sample libraries that are endorsed and licensed through Native Instruments, you are given a cross-grade offer to buy Contact 5 at $150 savings. So, you can buy Mega Macho Drums for $149. And you'll get this cross-grade offer, and then you can get Contact 5 for $249 instead of $399. So you're able to save $150, which is what it costs for. So you're getting both Mega Macho and Contact 5 for the price of just Contact 5 by itself if you were to go online and buy it right now. So if you haven't purchased Contact 5, and once you see some of the stuff you can do, you might want to add it to your arsenal, that's the route I would suggest taking. And in the meantime, right now, you can go onto the Native Instruments website and download the free Contact Player. And that gives you access to a free sample library they have you can download. It's um, select patches and smaller versions of things from the Contact Factory Library. So it's stuff that you can play with and get a feel for how the technology works, see some of the interfaces, some of the things I'll be showing you about here you can start to study up on a little bit. You can't get into the editing and making your own sample maps from samples that you have on your hard drives. So that aspect I'm going to show you, you can't get access to. So unless it's a license and it shows up under the Libraries tab, then it won't work in the Free Contact Player. That's the, the big difference. Um, if, if you have the full version, I can go over to my sample libraries. I can go to any of these libraries that I have on my hard drive and play them. Uh, you can't do that with the Free Contact Player. You have to only use libraries that are going to show up in the Libraries tab. So that's one of the biggest differentiating factors between the free version and the one that costs money. So before we get deep into stuff, I want to show you something that's kind of a little wow, kind of fun. So right here under Source, if I have Edit All Groups turned on, I can go here and there's all these playback modes. If I set it to S1200 or MP60, that will change the drum sounds to sound like an MPC60. And I doubt if you'll hear it on YouTube, but you hear that quantization? Makes it kind of noisier. Uh, if you go to the SP1200, it's a different sound. And if I put it just to normal, clean there's there's no quantization there's no noise and stuff so these two playback modes will let you change the quality of the samples and it's something you'll have to hear and experiment with when you have a chance uh, but check this out this is tone machine this is one of the sample manipulation tools and this takes all the sounds that are in the machine whether it's talking or anything and So these are drum samples. If I turn this off, <laughs> that's what I was playing. Set it to Tone Machine. It's very cool. I'm gonna show you some other stuff that's pretty mind blowing too, but I thought we would start with, that kind of power is just not present in most things that play back samples. They're just for playing back samples. On top of that, the other thing that's really powerful is the amount of effects and the send and the buses and the insert effects. 
This is basically a DAW as a plugin that plays samples. The power is just extraordinary. So let's make this go away and we're gonna start from ground zero. I'm gonna take off my glasses because I my glasses help for far away seeing, but they don't help for looking at small print right here in front of my nose. So I'm better without glasses. Who cares? All right, so here is our <laughs> displays. You can turn off the browser if you want. We'll come to that in a minute. Here is your master setting, and this is important for tune. You have tempo. I can set this to 120 beats per minute. And I can hit play. And I don't hear it any click unless I turn the metronome on. But I have a metronome. So I can make sure delays are syncing and so forth. Tap tempo. And the total global volume control. Output is really important. This is where you determine how many outputs of stereo, how many outputs of mono, how many outputs of 5.1, other configurations you work with. Um, I'm not going to cover this right now. I'll cover this on the uh, when we do the Mega Macho video owner's manual. We'll talk about this more. But you need to set this up and you need to set up your DAW so that they both have the same configurations. Otherwise, if you have your DAW set up for four stereo outputs and this is only set to one stereo output, it ain't going to work. You're not going to get the flexibility you're expecting to have. So you set this up for how many outputs you want, and then that will change how many output options you have when you click on the output assignment in Mega Macho, for example. Okay? All right. Keyboard is what you see at the bottom of the screen. It shows the notes that are being played. It will change colors if it's doing different modes because you can have it playing samples, you can have it playing and triggering sequences, you can have it actually triggering an on and off for effects, all sorts of things depending on what instrument and the scripting that was done to that instrument. And I'll show you some examples of that later. A uh, quick load is if you want to set up a quick set of like a, a playlist for a live show or something like that, you can quickly make a list. File, here's where you load and save. You also batch the reset multi is important. Batch resave is critically important. If you if you have contact five or four and you've bought some sample libraries and you put them into your hard drive into your sampler folder, right? And you go to select one of those instruments to load and you always get this error message. Where are these samples? I can't find these samples. Where are these samples? They're missing. These samples are missing, right? See it all the time. Batch resave, select the folder, do the search like you normally do every time, but now it's going to go through every instrument and multi and resave them. And it'll reconnect them once it knows where the, to be looking for the samples. It will look there again and again for each of the patches and resave everything correctly. So it's, it's you'll want to use batch resave. And then collect samples and batch compress. That's more for developers or else if you've got a whole bunch of sounds and you want to save them on your hard drive and use less space because it will compress them into a special format that nothing else can read, but it saves about, I think it's about 35, 40% of the memory of actual audio samples. It's a really nice compression. Then options is where you have your setups for DFD, memory, all that kind of stuff. Purge, erase everything, start over. Uh, let's see. Let's say new. Let's start here. So when you say new, this is your default, boring, simple little silver interface. You have solo and mute in case you have more than one thing loaded. Um, when you open it up, you get access to the effects. Here's where you choose between what type filter types you want, EQ types you want. Some of the effects, you don't see reverb and stuff in this list. Those are down here on the synth effects. Here's where you have convolution or a DSP based reverb. Uh, delay, chorus, flanger, phaser are here. Then at the bottom of the list is modulation. This is your envelopes. Your LFOs show up here. By the way, LFOs do not sync to MIDI. So dear native instruments for contact six, please make them sync to MIDI. It'd be very nice for some of the things we could do. And then we get to these. These are the tabs for group editor and mapping editor and wave editor. And at this point, I want to do a real quick thing. I want to tell you real quickly about my website, pluginguru.com, is where I have a whole bunch of patch libraries. This is where Mega Macho will show up for sale on July 1st. Um, if you come over here to Plugin Guru, please like the Plugin Guru page. It's a special at Native Instruments, only going on for six days. 
But I post news about special deals, cool albums, uh, Plug and Guru news here on my Facebook page. So please join. And then I'm going to be showing you in a minute some stuff using some sample libraries from my partner website, uh, soundstosample.com, which is also affiliated with sounds.beatport.com. And two of the libraries I'm going to show you in a minute is Anthemic Electro and Themic Electro. I don't know how you say that exactly. <laughs> and Essential Summer Anthems. These are inexpensive libraries. If you haven't gotten into sample libraries with sample, well, if you don't have Contact 5, there's not as much flexibility. Although if you use Ableton Live or something, these can do that stretching and stuff. It's cool to do this in the sampler because there's more things you can quickly do to manipulate and change them. So we'll get to that in a minute. All right. So we are ready to take a look at this. Uh, let's go all as techno. Let me get some drum loops. And here's my interface. I want to scroll down so I see all my notes. I'm going to take some, let's say, 1, 2, 12. An, a full octave, starting at C1. And if you notice, when I click at a higher up, I've dragged them over to the window. And I'm if I scroll down, I'm going to get to where it's eventually chromatic. One more down there. Then let go. And now, got some techno loops. OK, next octave, let's do some bass loops. Let's say 12 bass loops. And let's also do chromatic by dragging down to the bottom of this range and letting go. And Let's go Anthemic Electro and go to Synth Loops. Uh, there's 41, but let's just choose 10 random. Doesn't matter what key it is, because we're going to manipulate that to be the key we want it to be in a minute. There's 10. Let's go 12. And drag them here and drag down till we get chromatic. There. <laughs> They're not synced, are they? Like I said, we're going to fix that in a minute. And let's go Essential Summer Anthems. And here you have MIDI files and samples. So let's go here to get uh, 12. 12. Drag those here. OK. And uh, I don't think I did. I did. I don't think I did progressive tech loops. This library here is crazy because it's 652 <laughs> loops, so it just goes crazy. So let's just choose. Just to complete this, let's say 24 or 12. Here's 24, so it's going to go all the way up the octave range. Chromatic. Boom. So I have all of these samples across the keyboard. Now, to, in the interest of saving time, I'm going to say select zones by MIDI. And uh, that way, when I play, these go through and it changes so I see them here. Now, there's a really cool tool right here where I change it to C's first. And we're going to set it to Time Machine Pro. Right? So I have set all these on C's. This sample's really loud. So to control the volume of samples, there's a lot of ways to do it. Right here is probably the easiest. And if I want, I can tune this now. It's still playing at the same tempo. Cool, huh?
it's all tempo locked. When you set things to the time machine right here, now some of these, if you start going to the master and you slow this down to a slow tempo, like say 90 beats per minute, it's not gonna sound so good. So for drums, you could use beat machine and where it does recycle, and you could say what kind of grid you want it to be. And that's the grid that it will chop it up to. You could also say auto, which is even better because now it, oh, it missed one right here. And if I want, I can say add, put one right here. I need one right here. It didn't pick these up. So you can go in and edit. So now these loops are all following in sync at 90 beats per minute, even though they're originally 120 beats per minute. So that's the power inside of contact right away. That's something that you can't do with the SX24 or most anything else. Now let's take these drums, put it to tone machine. It goes through, it analyzes all of them. It takes it a second. And now... You can do cool stuff with this, man. I've, I've heard examples of this is way out and really cool. And I also haven't heard a lot of this. So there's a lot of cool places to take this. Um, let me show you one last thing that's really cool. So I wish that I didn't have to do all this stuff here with the tuning and volume at, at this level with the map. It's kind of kludgy, right? Watch this. This is where the powder comes in of Mega Macho. So we copy the zones. So it's copied all these samples from these four different libraries that I've created, right? Close that. Let's close master up. Close all this up. In fact, let's just make this go away. Save, no. Go over and load a Mega Macho library. So let's load up Psycho. It's crazy. Okay, but we're not going to go here. We're going somewhere else. Go to the mapping editor and the group editor. That's the two places we need to take a look at. And we select the Mega Macho samples. We delete them. We go to Psycho. And we say, Mr. Psycho, keep just that and say purge the rest. By the way, Psycho is a tribute to Craig. From Borderlands 2. Let's go over here and say paste zones and it pastes all of those samples from these four libraries into the Mega Macho universe. So let's bring the release down so it's short. Right? And now this is where it gets really fun. If you change this to drums, now it's a single, oh wait, we haven't done it yet, have we? No, it won't work. Right now, tuning and stuff is to everything. They, they're all following the same commands for tuning. If I bring down the filter, they're all filtered. If I bring up reverb, they're all following that, right? If you select all of these, and here's the magic command, control, Click on the samples, move each zone to its own group. And I want it to clone Psycho. Boom. Are you sure you want to do this? It's going to take it a second. Yes, please. So now we can go to the interface and set it to drum. And now this sound, let's lo-fi it. Oh, you know, we need to go global. Let's bring sustain up for everything so nothing fades out. 
on this end here, I want it to go through reverb. And I want it to go through distortion. And I want this here, but these two guys, I want these to be up an octave. And I want them to be panned to the right and to the left. And I want them to both be high pass filtered. <laughs> so if I go through the process of going to the sample level, to the waveforms, and turning on the waveform display, I could go through each of these samples. Let's see, I gotta make sure I go up here and say select zone by MIDI. Use time machine. Use time machine. Okay. And let's do the same for here. Time machine. Time machine. Because what's fun now. <laughs> Let's set it back to a. Uh, 30. Now, because of the Mega Macho interface, it's really easy to go to volume. And since it's following tempo, the delays are in sync. You can set things to the time map so that they sync in time. And now you can build a song with all these loops across the keyboard, different effects, different lo fi. Go to Maybe turn on glitch for this one and have it tuned down. Have it be like eighth notes and only a couple repeats so it doesn't get too crazy. You know what probably is, is uh... Yeah, so I'm not hearing the low frequencies. So there's so many places to take things and this interface just makes it a lot easier to do some pretty radical things. So now let me show you real quickly some of the libraries to give you some ideas of other interfaces and things people are doing. Save changes? No. So go to browser. A good place to start is the factory library. Let's look at something like the uh, Urban Beats and the performances. These are like mini kits. Um, the drum kits for Mega Macho have 61 samples. I think these have 12 at the most, where you have some drums down here. And then you have this, uh, this groove box. Here's my kick, right? And this is a sequencer inside of a sample playback system. So. Again, this is off the scale from what you would find in ESX24 or something. So it gives you access to manipulate those samples in different ways. And then the final octave above that in this particular script is to do real-time effects. So I can play this and then play notes up here. And I'm, 
I'm manipulating this set. Now, how are they doing this? How are they making this interface look different than the Mega Macho interface versus what we'll show you in a little bit? I'll show you this right now. Script editor is where the insanity happens. And here you see where we you lay out the buttons. Every one of these buttons, every one of these knobs, every one of these parameters has to be described in the scripting language. Look at all the parameters that you have to type in and create to describe everything that's happening on this top layer is manipulating things on the lower layers that are available to you inside of Contact 5. So it's huge and crazy what you can do. If you go up to, uh, let's go to the orchestral, a quick way to load things, let's say uh, strings. Um, I'm going to go string ensemble and you just drag it over the top of an existing ensemble or an existing patch and let go and it'll load it. Okay, so this is the string ensemble and you have and you have all these different types of strings. This is all part of the factory library. These come with Contact 5. <laughs> Someone that I used to know. There's other things you can do with this that's really cool. You could go to chords. Whatever you program into the interface in the scripting language, you can do crazy things, chord memories, all sorts of things. It's, it's awesome. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Let's go to another library. So that's the factory library. Um, these are really fun. These, these are some libraries that I purchased because I was going to maybe do some film score music. And uh, instead, I'm making drum libraries. So I haven't done that yet. But we could say our son is dying. Uh, replace yes and this loads up multiple patches from the symphobia library from symphobia 2 actually there's a little text here talking about what's going on and it's one two three four five six patches So you can go to different multis. Uh, here's phasers on kill. So it will load up all these different patches from the library. This is a thousand dollar library. The sounds, you've heard these in so many film scores already. Uh, it's just crazy. All right, phasers on kill took a little while to load. It has a whole lot of different things in it. Here's where you need lots of notes of polyphony and you need a big fast computer because you can easily my disk drive is going red light on me so that gives you just an idea of some of the libraries now uh symphobia so we go files reset multi their scripts are a little more basic they do have some usable, uh, nice features, full orchestra. And this takes a little while to load. Oh, it's already in memory, so it's good to go. So you have a whole orchestra in one patch. And you actually have, uh, here's another variation on staccato. And 
here is sustains. And I have mod wheel bringing in. Bring up some reverb so it sounds even more realistic. It's very nice. Amazing libraries. But they have much simpler parameters to work with, right? So let me show you a cool trick. Let's go to Dystopia. This is crazy stuff. Let's go to the trailer hits. So this is a map of just a ton of... crazy hits like the film score and the trailers that you see before a movie have so many times used these samples but wouldn't it be nice to be able to edit these quickly on the fly do crazy things to them well let me show you how to do it with mega macho so let's select all of these samples copy and we can go over here and close this library and in the future, you'll go over here and Mega Macho will be here, but right now it's right here. So we can load up a kit. Doesn't matter what kit it is, we're not even gonna play it. We go to mapping and we go to the group editor. And we first go down to the mapping and we delete all of the drum samples. And then we go up here to the one, we wanna just select one group and say purge the empty groups. That will get rid of all the extra groups that were there. If you don't do this, you end up with really over-processing when you start spinning knobs. And you say paste into the map, and it pastes all those. And then like we did earlier, select them all. Say move each zone to its own group, cloned. And boom, 67 samples. And let's make the release a little bit shorter. And if you hold it for sustain, you get the full length. And now, I can go to drums and... Let's bring up the filter and... Pan this to the left, this to the right. Put a little reverb on it to glue it together a little bit. And this one, I want it to glitch, but not that glitch. That's a cool glitch, but I want to have it do an octave in eighth notes, I want to repeat it eight times. Ah, quarter notes. So now I can easily manipulate any of these samples to make new hits. You could take some sounds and use high pass filter. Get released to match the decay. Okay. And I don't like the high end of that side. So bring up resonance. Bring down filter. There. And put both these to the tone verb. And let's choose a really weird preset like Nightfall. Weird stuff added to it. So, 
that's what Mega Macho is for, is to take samples from all the other libraries and quickly put them into this interface if you want. And now you can manipulate them in really cool ways that would take a lot of time because these tools don't show up in their interface. They didn't take the time to make a script that has distortion, lo-fi, glitch, compressor, transient, and EQ per sample available with this interface. So the scripting becomes really important. And when you get to the scripting and uh, things like this, uh, when you hit the edit, we have a password on it, so you can't see what's going on. But all the native instruments, when you go to the contact library, every one of their patches, there's no password. So you can see their libraries. If you want, you can even do this. If you want to learn scripting, you can say save. No, if we want to go files, new instrument. If you load in some samples and you go to the script editor, they have a whole bunch of factory presets of all sorts of really cool things. Um, I learned a lot of things about what I wanted Mega Macho to do from playing with these script editors. Here's where you do your chords. So load up a synth sound and set it to chord. And now you have the chord memorize setup feature to play with. So the power of Contact 5, I hope you see, is huge. And it's much more than just playing back samples. And it's very easy to take samples from one library and put them into another library's interface. And that's why I spent a lot of time working with my designer and my graphic guy on the interface for Mega Macho to make it very flexible. So it ultimately can be this really fun place to go play with samples from anywhere else you have in Contact 5. So there, hope I explained it. Um, we're gonna do another tutorial. This will be more of like a uh, owner's manual for Mega Macho, will be coming up next week. And then the week after that, the library's out. And maybe I'll show you some uh, how to use it in real world applications and stuff like that at that point. So hope this helps. It's really fun to make, had a great time, and uh, I'll see you again soon, okay? Bye.